Similar was the Crundle Gunner defect. Okay, that's complete, completely wrong. Oopsie daisy, guys. I'm not sure where the arrows are pointing to, um, honestly. Welcome guys to another MSK Radiology teaching video. My name is Dr. Christoph Acton and in today's video we will have a look at a shoulder MRI. This is a T1 fat set rated sequence after direct MR orthography and what we want to focus on is this area here. So if I really zoom in here you can see the cartilage of the humeral head looks okay. We have cartilage of the glenoid fossa which here we have quite difficulties to see. So what's, what's this? Just make up your mind and we'll have a look at it. So this is the same patient again, the T1 after direct MR orthography. We can also have a look at the uh, PD fat saturated sequence here and we can clearly see that the cartilage is severely thinned or even maybe missing here. But I like this image more and we'll come to that uh, later. And here on the transfer section you can also see the cartilage, otherwise it's just this area here centrally within the glenoid where we struggle really seeing the cartilage. And the underlying cortical bone here seems to protruding out a little bit and it's also nicely visible here. So it's also a little bit thickened the uh, subchondral uh, region here, like the bone plate. So this is something to notice and you can also see that the joint itself doesn't show any other signs of osteoarthritis. So so what's that? Is that a osteochondral lesion? Is it a cartilage wear, cartilage defect or is it just a variant? And you probably guessed it by now it's just a anatomic variant and this is called the tubercle of Asaki or Asaki's tubercle. So let's quickly have a look at a few uh, papers that deal with this so you can see here in the same region as the glenoid pear area, we come to that later, lies the rare tubercle of Asaki, another variant characterized by thickening of subchondral bone in the central glenoid fossa. This is exactly what we saw here. And yeah, it's certainly important to recognize because it's not a pathology, but actually a variant. And you can see here, this as opposed to the thing that I have just shown you here, this one here would be a a bare area and this was also uh, nicely done by these folks here from NYU and hi Salia <laughs> so we, we did a study there or mainly Salia was uh, the first author where they assessed the prevalence of this bare area in the pediatric population and let me just quickly show you here the image so in this teenager sometimes you see these deep defects or well, this deep fossa or this bare area here, very centrally, like this. And this is the glenoid bare spot. Um, it's called, like you can see it here in the title, glenoid bare spot. And it's interesting because they have a nice illustration. So this is the number of bare area uh, or bare spots depending on the age group. And you can see it's just very prominent or more prominent in this 12 to maybe 16 year old and then kind of like not seen very early in childhood and only occasionally in adults. Now depending on which study you're reading or which review article so far something sometimes it's written as a synonym so glenoid bear spot is sometimes considered to be the same like uh, the bear spot and for example in this one here so there is a the so-called bear spot or tubercle of Asaki, figure 16. So let's have a look at figure 16 here quickly. So this is Asaki's tubercle, how it's protruding in here. And this bear area, the, for them, this is now also a bear area. I think there is a little bit of a confusion also in the literature or it's not fully uh, agreed on by everybody, whether it's the same thing or whether you can have a bear spot without Osaki's tubercle. So generally the cartilage is always a little bit thin centrally in the glenoid fossa but uh, yeah I would make a distinction because you can have as they have shown here in this study let's see whether there are some other images you can have these fossas here I think that's a nice image 
So this kind of like missing cartilage here without hypertrophy or without thickening of the subcontinental plate. So I would probably make this distinction and uh, in our case now I would not call this a bare spot but probably uh, Asakis tubercle or maybe it's just the combination of both so this is uh, not quite clear. Now what I want to do now and I haven't tried this before recording is to find out who Asaki was. Okay, Because I noticed when looking at the references everybody is just citing another review article so we will now try to find the original publication. So let's start off with this article here. We can quickly check the, the date. So 2014, that's fine in AGR. And we go to Asaki and the tubercle of Asaki, which is not pathologic, reference six. So in case you're bored by this, then you can probably stop the video here, but this is actually a good exercise anyways. So Rudez and Zanetti, so this is certainly another review article in European Journal of Radiology from 2008. So let's go there. So that's the article here. Let's have a look. Full text. And we just... Yeah, we, I think we can use this one. Saki. The tubercle of Asaki is the thickest subcontinental bone in the glenoid cavity. It lies in the center of the glenoid and cartilage is thinned over the tubercle. As such, thinning should not be diagnosed as a defect. Figure 6, let's have a look at the... yeah, that's right. And then reference 10, about variability of the shape of the glenoid. And in the authors there is no Mr. Asaki present, so we go here. Let's have a look at this article and it's not full text. No. Okay. Eh. So let's go here, PDF, and let's look for Asaki. So what do they say? So we then investigated the relationship between the center of the circle and the area of subcontinental bone thickening under the bare spot, so-called tubercle of Asaki. So for them, the thickening below the bare spot is Asaki's tubercle. So this is some kind of a original study, but uh, let's see. Um, yeah, here introduction. Teardrop, teardrop. Da da. This. Okay. Recently attention was drawn to the fact that the bare area, and again synonym, tubercle of Asaki is located at the center. So reference 18 here. Let's go reference 18. Um, oh no, it's, that's, that's now difficult. <laughs> textbook from 1951, textbook of human anatomy, Mason Paris. Let's see whether we can find this. Um, yeah, uh, that looks like it could be in French, so... Asaki was certainly not French, guys, so uh, what's happening here? So here is another article about the tubercle of Asaki. Uh, orthopedic journal. So there are tubercle of Asaki, three cited in four, well, three and four, let's have a look. The Wilde, so that's the one that we had, this was this anatomical paper uh, from 2004, so they have another reference here from 2002, let's have a look at this one, and let's have a look at the PDF. No result there. The bare spot, however, it has been focused. The tubercle is defined of the underlying subcortical bone. So I was wrong. So it's number two. 
bilateral osteochondritis dissecans. Oh dear. Um, that's not even available here, author. Okay, OCD. PDF. All oh, right, nice. okay, good. So let's see, OCD, true osteochondrosis, case report, methods, coronal and axial facet of the left shoulder showing an osteochondral glenoid defect harboring allows signal intensity, non displaced loose body surrounded by contrast oh dear so i don't know guys um that's probably just the bare spot and that's just the glenohumeral ligaments so i don't see any loose bodies here did they do surgery and it's on both sides so how likely should that be again so this is an anatomic variant um Oopsie daisy, guys. I'm not sure where the arrows are pointing to, um, honestly. Uh, that's funny. Again, right shoulder. Term. Similar osteochondral kind of defect. Okay, that's complete, completely wrong. Great for OCD. Okay, I'm, I'm not sure what they show with this arrow, so they probably mean this thing here, which is a typical normal variant, osteo. It's not an osteochondral defect, it's just a glenoid bear spot, guys. So, yeah, as you can see, not everything published is uh, relevant. So, did they do surgery? This is now... Okay. Just trying to find something, some spelling mistakes. Focal thickening of the subchondral bone in the mid-aspect with thinning of overlying cartilage is considered a normal variant named tubercle of Asaki. Okay, that's certainly correct, but they don't provide any reference, so I can't use this one. Okay, we, we're not coming further here, so let's just Asaki tubercle anatomy. New strategy, met. we just type in Asaki, shoulder, and we just sort by most recent, and we go to the very last result. I want to go here, we go down, we go to the very first uh, citation and let's see Asaki tubercle, let's, oh, it's even there, it's even, okay, so where do we end up here, okay, there, I think that's something interesting, Asaki contribution à l'anatomie et physiologie de la cavité glenoïde de l'homoplate so that might be something we should have a look at. So um, we go there and then let's have a look here. This is a PDF, probably some foreign language from 1979, Italian. And uh, let's have a look at Asaki. And there is a citation. Asaki contributes, that's the one that I just mentioned, from 1885. So. <laughs> I was expecting Asaki to be some Japanese guy and maybe 1990s or something like that or maybe 1980s but this is surprising let's see whether we can find more about that citation for this um, Asaki is the author and probably don't need all this here 1885 mm. that's the Asaki that I probably wanted to look for but I didn't find any anything else now. I, I think I just leave it here. 
well anyways thanks for watching just quickly going back here to this don't call this a defect and certainly don't call the other stuff defects when it's just a normal variant and with that just a few last uh, infos here first i'd like to thank all my patrons 100 people that contribute every month to this and i'd like also make you aware that i do saturday evening teachings 8 pm uk time every week you can join there it's on my homepage msk.acton.org you can book your slot for 49 pounds it's one hour case discussions in an interactive manner so all the daikon files are available on collective finds you can just uh, have a look at the images before the session and ask any questions you might have during the sessions and the spots are certainly limited to keep uh, or to give everybody the possibility to ask questions so i can answer most of, if not all of them if you want to uh, know more about what i do go over to msk.acton.org and check that one out and with that thanks for watching and see you next time so before you move on to the next video, I want you to briefly reflect on how much benefit you get out of my videos here. How much of the stuff that I'm teaching you can you actually apply in clinical routine? If you get something out of it, then you could consider to become a patron of my YouTube channel. Patreon is an online platform where people can support other content creators just like me. You can find the link over here and click there right now. Now, there are other options as well. If you really want to go to your next level in MSK, then you can consider to join the Virtual MSK Radiology Fellowship. you find the link down here and also in the description of this video. The Virtual MSK Fellowship is a one-on-one -on -one case-based teaching program where I help radiologists to get to their next level by increasing their speed and especially confidence in MSK reporting. So go check that one out.